Hi everybody, welcome to BI Land. Today we are going to see a simple yet extremely important tip in Power BI. Imagine you have created a report and uploaded to Power BI services online, and then you have scheduled the dataset to be refreshed. What if in your filters you have selected a date? This selected date remains the same in the filter selection, even though the report has been refreshed and the new dates are not available. The report might even be blank because of the obsolete dates. In this scenario, the user needs to go and change the date in the filter himself. Yes, he can do that. However, what we want is to have the latest date or last date by default in the filter selection. It means that when the user opens the report, all the visuals are up to date according to the last available date in our data. Let's see how we can do this. Okay, let's have a look in our model. We have a fact table, which is oil production, and also a calendar. To see how we have constructed this calendar, please watch my other video on this channel. I leave you the link below in the description. In our fact table, we have the oil production for different countries, different regions, for different years. And then we have also department study date. Basically, department study date shows that each line has been studied on what date. And this date makes our calendar. For example, if I go to our fact table, here I see this line has been studied on this day. Or this line has been studied on this day. And according to these dates, I make our calendar. So this calendar. Again, I highly recommend you to go watch the video on date table on this channel. Basically, we are taking the dates from our fact table minimum and maximum and then we construct this table and then we have the other columns like your quarter your month and then sorting week etc now what we want imagine we have a visual like let's say region and the oil production and then i bring the oil production for the time being don't worry about the numbers so here we see the oil production for each region. And imagine I have a date as a slicer. If I bring date into slicer, I make a drop down list. Here, if I choose a date, let's say this date, on this date, I have studied this data. Now, if I leave like this and I deploy my report on Power BI services, it's going to stay on this date, even though we refresh the report. What we want is to have a selection here to be called last date. And anytime I go on to the report, it is selected according to that date. Even though it's refreshed, that last date dynamically gets the last date on the calendar, right? Let's see what we can do about this. So again, what we want is inside this list to have a text showing the last date and I select on last date and this report by default stays on that last date even though it gets refreshed and that last date changes. Okay, let's jump into it. To be able to put that last date in our list, I need to have another column in calendar or date table. So let's go to our calendar table. Here, I'm going to add new column. Let's call it date slicer. Last date is the maximum date in our date column. To be able to detect our maximum date, we are going to simply put maximum date. So if I put a condition, if calendar date is equal to maximum calendar date, then I want this to be shown as last date. Else, I want to put the same calendar date. Here it means that for each line, which means this calendar date, this is for each line in each row, it brings the 
value for the date and compares it to the maximum of the date column. So maximum of the date column, basically it looks at the column and gets the maximum of the date. And for each row, it iterates and it looks if it's the maximum date. So it's going to be only one row, which is maximum date. So we are going to have for one line last date. If it's not that line, if, if it's not the maximum date, I want to repeat the same value which we find in our date column. So I can put here calendar date, but it's not going to work because if I put the calendar date, this calendar date, the format for this column is a date format and here is a text format. For that reason, if I put calendar date, it's going to give me an error. We can test that, but for now, I'm just going to put format format function to make also date value as text and our date value is calendar calendar date and this date for format of this is going to be day with two letters and month with two letters and year and if i close this i hit enter So we simply have our date as text. You see it's on the left side. And then I'm going to have a one value, which is last date. If I filter on this, I see that I have a line, which is the latest date in our study department. I take out this filter. Now, if I bring this into my slicer, I have this possibility of this selection, but Remember, if I had put here without format, so I'm going to just copy this. And if I only put calendar, it's going to give me error. And the error is going to be according to the format. So you see, there's different formats. Here is the text, here is the date format. So it's not going to accept. So for this part, I'm going to bring back my format. Okay, now if I go back to our visuals here, instead of this date, I'm going to bring date slicer here and I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to make it drop down list and I'm going to make it descending so that I see this last date as the first selection and I'm going to select on this. So now if I publish my report on Power BI services, it's going to be always selected on the last date. And even though I refresh my report, this last date is going to be changed, but because the selection is always last date, it's going to apply to our visuals. So this way, by default, your report is always, when you open it, up to date. This is very important. And most of the time, your users, your clients want this. Okay, so we are basically done here. We reached our goal, but as a bonus point, I'm going to show this calculation a bit differently. If we go to our column, we in our calendar table, data slicer, with the help of this formula, we were able to show our last date. But probably some of you are having a hard time to understand this formula, and it's not as readable. We can make this formula more readable and also better to understand by using variables. So it's an exercise also to use variables. I'm going to copy this formula. So control C and I'm going to create a new column. And I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to call this with variable. So basically we are going to repeat exactly the same calculation, but this time using variables. I'm going to go a few lines down. I'm going to create variables. My first variable is going to be current row date equal to, basically when we are iterating for each row, we want to see what is the date for the current row. That means that it is basically 
the date column, the value that comes from the date column. So I can simply put date column. My second variable is going to be max date. This one, I want to look at the column and get the maximum of the date column. And I'm going to use max function and calendar date. So now I have my two variables. First variable for each line, I'm bringing the date for that line. And the second variable, which is the maximum date of the date column. And then I use return key. And in my return key, instead of using calendar date, I am going to say current row date. If the current row date is equal to maximum date of the column, then put it as the extra parentheses, put it as the last date, else format. We said that we use format to make both as text, else put the current row date. So this is more readable as we have discussed in our previous video about the variables. And I highly recommend you to watch that video also. Using variables makes our formula more readable. Basically, we are saying that if my current row date is equal to the maximum of the date, then make that row as the last date, else just put the current row date in this format. If I hit enter, it is going to be exactly the same values. And if I go here and I search for last date, it's going to filter on the last date with the same values. I clear the filter. So, so we made the second column just to read this formula. This is shorter formula, but this is more readable. So it's up to you to choose which one you prefer. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Watch my other video on date table to master calendar. Don't hesitate to put comments and like this video. Subscribe to my channel for the coming videos. Until then, good luck.